Recently, something huge happened in this community. Anyone remember this guy? Without further ado, the presentation. And it's all to do with this. The Birmingham Telecom BT Tower in Birmingham. That, of course, is Ranty Flat Earth. Or is it? Because he has recently stated that he is no longer a flat earther. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, I know what you're all thinking, surely not. But it all started when Ranty approached Conspiracy Cats about a photo that he couldn't explain. And that photo showed Blackpool Tower in front of a range of mountains in the distance. Fast forward a few weeks later and this happened on Conspiracy Cats' live stream. Well, the past two months have been basically going through this image and trying to come to terms with what's the reasons for why I've, I see flat in my location and why does this image show drop looking over my location so there's definitely a conflict there and you know you know i've been discussing it with you we've been finding things out and we might have a different explanation we may have a different explanation for what's going on um that could be incorporated inside of the globe model uh but give validation not just to the work i've done but why other people see further too but based upon all of this new evidence and that's what we're all looking for is new evidence i've been asking for it for a while for proof of the globe proof of drop especially in my location and thanks to bev and thanks to the gentleman that took this original image um i've got a, a i've got to say um i'm now back on the globe side so huge kudos to ranty for finally accepting the evidence and then seeing sense However, his old colleagues on the Flat Earth debate team haven't taken it too well. Yes, Nathan Oakley and his tribe of minions are panicking like the owners of the Premier League Big Six when they announced they were joining the Super League. We are going to join Nathan's daily debate show as they discuss. Well, there's not. See, the problem, they want us to argue about, about why the mountains is this and why the tower is that. The, the, the horizon is not geometric, and yeah, that's what's still applies to the yeah. airport. Yep. Yeah, yeah, black swan still applies. Exactly, black swan. I was about to get to that because Anthony brought it up. Right, where Anthony described there being a mirage, this fold line, as it sometimes gets described, is that supposed to be Earth curve? It is irrelevant. Let me explain to everyone out there why this photo proves a globe. This is from a screenshot of Katz's live stream, where, as you can see, the peaks are all named and much matched up to the image. The one directly behind Blackpool Tower is called Dow Crag and has an elevation of 778 metres and a prominence of 129 metres. Prominence, by the way, is the height of the peak relative to the lowest contour line encircling it, but containing no higher summit within it. Now, as you can see, the summit to the right of Dow Crag is higher and is called Brim Fell. Brimfell has an elevation of 796 metres, but crucially, a prominence of only 25 metres. There is clearly more than 25 metres of these mountains visible here, so prominence is irrelevant in this image. Now, Dalkrag is 81.47 kilometres away from the point that the image was taken. Blackpool Tower, which is immediately in front of Dalkrag, is only 19.62 kilometres away from the observer. But crucially, Blackpool Tower is only 158 metres tall. So on a flat earth, you would absolutely expect these mountains to be larger than Blackpool Tower in this image. And they aren't, because they dropped over the curve. Because it looks like a mirage effect. Why would it be that every time there's claimed to be a physical geometric sphere edge horizon, ends up being a refractive effect oh could it be because it's down to a limited angle could it be because it's down to the weather could it be down to an optical effect could it be down to a transition of heat to cold over a watery surface could it be down to a million and one of the things that haven't been factored into their mathematics yeah but we're not claiming it of course it could refraction is a thing as i've stated many times before 
but we are talking about the mountains here. They are higher above the horizon, so are less likely to be affected by these optical effects. There is, however, a positive assertion that this effect is called Earth Curve, and that effect doesn't use angular size. So my question to Conspiracy Cats, and if it's Ranty Flat Earth making this claim, is why would it be the case that when you're trying to debunk a claim we don't make as a straw man about a model we haven't presented of a flat earth that does definitely exclude 90% of the variables that occur that we've already listed. Most of them have been listed by Ranty himself. So you're going to ignore all of those factors to make your straw man argument. And yet the straw man argument is inclusive of angular size reduction at distance that isn't included when you make the assertion that the earth's a sphere. So why would it be the case that your straw man uses angular size but your globe earth claim doesn't oh i'll tell you why because their globe earth claim has hijacked the effect of perspective and called it earth curve now this is one of nathan's favorite tricks he likes to get in a lot of articulate sentences and repeat them over and over and over as a way to try and convince people that what he's saying is true so they won't be able to transition back to applying angular size reduction at distance and a claim that there's drop oh we won't will we are you sure about that? You really need to stop talking about angular size because it's not going to help you. Because one is the hijacking of the other. Perspective is Earth curve. Can I just point out quickly, I've just done really quick calcs for what they should have done for their calculations. Um, 20 feet observer height, 50 miles observation for the mountains in the background. The target hidden height on their model should be 1,321 feet. From memory, I think those mountains are all about 2,000 feet tall because we don't have anything bigger than 2,000 feet in England, so they're all about 2,000 feet. 1,300 feet of the mountains should be below the Earth geometric curve, right? It looks to me that we are seeing pretty much all of those mountains. Maybe the stuff that's blocked out by the foreground stuff is going to be blocking out the bases of them. It looks to you, but you don't know that, do you, Sleeping Warrior? You are guessing, nay, hoping. But where's the, where's the geometric drop that is being claimed when we're, it's supposed to be obscured by, well, more, more than half of it. It seems to me like we're seeing all of it. If you could see the full photograph uh, that uh, that was dropped into Discord there a couple of minutes ago, if someone could get the full photograph and post it into Master B and, or maybe uh, maybe Nathan Gajero, you can see, we'd see more of it. Anthony's gone back to making the assertion in terms of where the geometric drop would be, but he said the feet and inches value of the mountains about 2000 and yet when debunking a straw man the globe earthers are more than content to describe it with an angular size getting smaller with distance but no reference to a geometric drop well no because we're talking about your claim that uses uh, wh what what claim on what model is making this assertion that ignores all other effects that have been detailed over the course of about six years yeah the great big long list of things we say causes shit to shrink get too small to see, or be obscured from bottom up. Half of which is new optical physics which you invented without any peer-reviewed paper or anything. Or obscured altogether, depending on the weather conditions. That great big list is what you are now strawmanning us with, bearing in mind that your list only has earth curve in it. And your earth curve comes with a feet and inches value that won't change with distance. So let's see if you've now conceded by way of conspiracy cats that angular size is relevant. Shit shrinks, right? Hashtag shit shrinks. So if you're going to calculate it for a straw man against us, let's see you calculate it in Earth Curve Mathematics. See how far it goes out of whack when you start accounting for the fact that things get smaller with distance. They don't stay at 2,000 feet. Yeah? They do in your whole number mathematics that excludes perspective, but in reality, the angular size that you're trying to debunk as a claim we don't make gets smaller. Why is that excluded from Earth Curve Mathematics then, cats? Because Earth Curve Mathematics figures out the drop, not the size of something. Let's just forget the curve calculator for one minute and try and adopt the fact that the Earth is flat. And that's what you say, Nathan, that the Earth is obviously and observably flat. You say it all the time. Now, if that is the case, let's run the numbers, shall we, and see what the angular sizes of these things are. Dalclag is 81.47 kilometers away and has a height of 778 meters. That gives us an angular size of 0. 0.547 degrees. Blackpool Tower 
at 158 meters tall and 19.62 kilometers away gives us an angular size of 0.461 degrees. So on a flat earth, those mountains in the background should be appearing bigger to us than the Blackpool Tower in front of it, but they don't. This can only mean that the mountains are going over a curve, which drops them below Blackpool Tower from the viewer's perspective. And you absolutely do have to use the full height of this mountain when you're figuring out the angular size, because let's remember, we're basing this off a flat earth where there is no drop in your opinion. And just in case you're in any doubt, check out this brilliant piece of analysis by Ruhif. Right, so the first thing we need to do is properly identify all the peaks. And if anyone wants to disagree with any of these, you can blow me. There we go, that's all of them. All right, so all I've done here is just thrown all this data into Excel uh, and just sorted the peaks uh, by their distance. Uh, easy enough. Uh, next step is to work out an angular size for each mountain. All right, so next thing is, uh, what do we do with that angular size? Uh, like how, how do we apply it to the image? Uh, how big is 0 0.5848 degrees in this image? So we need some way to convert this angular size into a number of pixels per degree. And this is how you do it. Right, so we have our observer location here. Uh, and what we're gonna do is pick at least two landmarks in the image. And we're gonna draw a line from the observer to that landmark and get the heading. All right, so here I've drawn a line to Blackpool Tower and the heading is 355.03 degrees. Uh, and I've also grabbed the, the pixel coordinates, uh, which on my image, which is the highest resolution image, uh, pixel coordinate is 2705. All right, so in the table, uh, you can see that I've got four landmarks and I've grabbed all their pixel locations and then the headings off Google Earth, and then just plotted them on this chart down the bottom. And as you can see, this relationship between pixels and headings is a linear relationship. So if I wanted to identify something in the image, I could use this graph at the bottom to work out where I should be looking on Google Earth based on its pixel location in the image. So for example, if I wanted to know what this little pointy thing is here, I go and grab its pixel location, which is 3276. But then instead of trying to figure it out from the chart, I can actually plug it into the equation for the chart. Uh, and that will give me quite a precise heading for whatever that thing is. Uh, and that heading is 355.692 degrees. And what do you know? If I go and plot a line in Google Earth with that exact heading, it runs exactly into this church spire, uh, which is on Dixon Road in Blackpool. Uh, so that's pretty good confirmation that this scale is very accurate. And that scale is one degree equals 861.88 pixels. And we'll just round up to 862 pixels per degree. And the cool thing about this scale is that if you're using a camera with a rectilinear lens, it means that scale is just as applicable vertically as it is horizontally. Uh, this becomes pretty obvious when you realize that lenses are circular and that if you take a picture in landscape mode, uh, you'll see that the objects look exactly the same as if you turn the camera on its side and took a picture in portrait. Right, so back to our spreadsheet. Uh, and now that we know the scale for the image, uh, we can start converting these angular sizes into pixel heights. So for example, the Closest peak is Bank House Moor, which is on the far left of the image. And we know that the angular size of 0 0.2763 degrees equates to 238 pixels. So let's go and draw 238 pixels on the image. So there we go, 238 pixels high. And oh shit, that's not good. It looks like there's about 200 meters of that mountain below the horizon. 
It is genuinely a fantastic piece of globe earth proof and smashes flat earth to bits. Well, there we go. What a bombshell for Flat Earth. One of its most prominent supporters abandons it because he sees the evidence and realises he was wrong. What a shocking two weeks for Flat Earth. Not only have they lost one of their biggest proponents, they also were exposed, like last week in last week's Flat Earth Friday, for believing any sort of information that was sent to them. They were catfished very easily. It's not looking good for them, is it? Well done, Ranty. He will be appearing on the Simon Dan podcast very soon, where I will have some very important questions for him. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday, where the US is 50% smaller than we're told. Jason Maggard is back. See you then. <laughs>